West Ham have recently parted ways with long-standing manager David Moyes as the Irons look to move into a brand new era of the football club. Now, although the style of play of the new manager Julian Lopetegu isn't too far away from that of David Moyes, with obviously them averaging very similar possession stats in the first two games of this season as they did in the last season under David Moyes, I still think that this summer has been built to put West Ham in very, very good stead for a massive season for the club. Therefore, in today's video, I'm going to delve into some of Lopetegu's biggest signings, ranging from Arouan Basaka to John Claire Tadebo to Crescenzio Somerville, whilst also looking at some of the players already at the club that are in for a massive, massive season. Whilst we're also going to be evaluating just how far can West Ham go this season? We're going to start off the video by looking at, I mean, who else could we start by looking at? It has to be the skipper, Jared Bloody Bowen. Before we look at him on the pitch, and I mean, he doesn't need any introduction, does he? Absolutely zero introduction needed for this man at all. And there's a reason he's valued so highly by West Ham. And there's a reason that not many clubs have actually looked at coming in for him. Because they know they've got absolutely no chance of taking him away from London. Because he is absolutely key to West Ham. And he also, for me, epitomises everything that I've ever seen and thought about the Irons. You know, he's got that grit, the hard work. But also, just a little bit of silky flair about him. So, we're going to now get into... I mean, just how good he is. Only briefly because I know everyone knows how good Jared Bowen is. Last season, Bowen racked up 22 goal contributions in the Premier League last season. And this incredible output does not seem like slowing down anytime soon. I mean, he's already got one goal in his first two games this season. I mean, Jared Bowen is absolutely perfect for a team that's set up to be direct and hit teams on the break. And if we look at Suchek's first goal against Crystal Palace at the weekend, Wambasaka is carrying the ball from his own box. But... If we look just past Wambasaka, you see little Jared Bowen right here behind him. Now, as I said before, Bowen works hard. He will get back. He'll put in some defensive contributions. He'll help you out. But with the way that West Ham want to play, and obviously that being kind of hitting teams a little bit in transition at times, that means that Bowen has got to have a bit of a shift in him. He's got to be up and down. And he does that. If we look at these clips here, the work rate, the speed, the drive to get forward and make something happen for West Ham is sensational. Wambasaka obviously drives West Ham forward really, really well here. And he's kind of cornered into a little bit of space, but does well to lay off the ball to none other than Jared Bowen, who's caught up with Wambasaka and managed to get on the ball and then drives through that little gap of space on the edge of the area before laying the ball off inside the Crystal Palace 18-yard box. It eventually kind of bobbles around and ends up at Suchek's foot, who finishes it brilliantly, but this whole move is built upon not just Wambasaka's drive to carry the ball forward for West Ham, but also Jared Bowen's ability to not just sprint up the pitch and catch up and get on the ball in a really dangerous area with all this space in front of him, but also the power he's got to drive the ball forward. And kind of, he's not really put under too many challenges here, but just with the speed he picks up that ball and runs, it means that it's hard to actually get across and stop him, especially with how tricky he can be. This sort of trance creation, whether it not actually be directly Jared Bowen getting the assist, is actually nothing new at all for Bowen, with him averaging 3.31 chances created per 90 in the first two Premier League games. If we look at Bowen, he didn't get too many assists last season, still a solid number, I think it was around six, but this sort of thing that he did, like the one that he did against Crystal Palace, is a reoccurring thing for him. He just causes danger. He makes things happen at times. And again, whether or not he actually gets the assist, it doesn't really matter because he is still the danger man. He can make things happen on left foot, right foot. And obviously, we don't need to talk about Jared Bowen's finishing. I mean, when he comes inside on his left foot with that little shift of body weight, you're better off just praying because he's going to find a way to put it in one of the corners. Moving on now though, and I don't think we've seen too much of the new kind of arrivals at West Ham with obviously them making quite a few signings this summer, but I'm going to touch on some of the ones I think will have the biggest impact on this West Ham team. Starting off with that, it's going to be an absolute statement signing in Jean-Claire Tadebo. I mean, this signing is truly mental for me. A man that was linked to Manchester United for a long, long time, it feels. And I also said myself that he should be looking for a top six Premier League side if he was to come to England. For West Ham, no disrespect to West Ham at all. But to come in and get this signing 
is brilliant. Nevertheless, though, I absolutely love it from top to bottom. I think Todibo is an exceptional centre-half and exactly the profile that West Ham needed. Lopetegui likes both his centre-halves to be competent on the ball and offer them sort of line-breaking passes at times that allow for midfielders and forwards to attack with speed and directness. Therefore, replacing someone like Kurt Zuma with someone that's a little bit better on the ball, well, quite a lot better on the ball, if we're being honest, is a brilliant, brilliant move by the board at West Ham. Last season, the former Nice centre-half averaged 5.27 progressive passes per 90, seeing him sit in the top 13% of centre-backs in Europe's top five leagues for that metric. He sat in the top 7% of centre-halves in Europe's top five leagues for successful take-ons, and maintained an 89.6% pass completion rate, whilst also attempting 85.54 passes per 90. He really is, for me, a ball-playing machine, and although he wasn't necessarily the first point of call at Nice for playing out from the back and necessarily being that sole carrier forward, he's still very, very good at it. And when you put him into this West Ham team, I think he has a massive, massive role to play. If I'm going to put it simply, and if we were very much so, not dumb it down, but shorten it down a little bit. The French defender is a front-footed, aggressive possession machine. I think that's a fair analysis. Now, I understand that he hasn't played in the first two games or he's only had a few sub-appearances with minimal minutes really in there. I think it's kind of normal when you're bringing in a high amount of signings. You're bringing in quite a lot of bodies. You've got to phase them in slowly. And West Ham's squad being as good as it is means that they can afford to do that. However... I think if we give it a little bit more time, give it time for the D ball to settle in, he will be an amazing, amazing signing. And he will be one of the first names on the team sheet come the end of the season for West Ham. Moving across the back line, it brings us to someone who's featured a little bit more than Tadebo and someone that we all know an absolute load about because he's been in the Premier League for ages. And that's another reason why it's a brilliant signing. Aaron Wambasaka, the experienced spider. That's a new nickname, but the experienced spider who's an absolute monster 1v1, but also shown that when he's not given too much responsibility in possession, can still be a fairly solid asset when you've got the ball. In the 20 games that Wambasaka started last season, he maintained a 59.3% dual win rate and averaged just over two interceptions per 90, seeming average more than the majority of the Manchester United squad. A player like Wambasaka, who is a 1v1 specialist and can nullify I would argue 90% of wingers in the Premier League is a perfect match for this West Ham team. And honestly, I think if David Moyes had even stayed this year, wan would probably still be coming to West Ham because in a team that sit a little bit deeper, want to defend and be a little bit more pragmatic about the way they go forward, but also have a nice free-flowing attack in there, I think wan is absolutely perfect. And again, he coincides with the way Lopetegui wants to set up and has done in the first two games, not really seeing any of that three at the back stuff. And I'm not sure if we necessarily will, but with the flat back four, I think Wambasaka is just a perfect, perfect addition to this West Ham squad. I want to shift on to Lopetegu for a little bit as an actual overall manager because we've touched on him already briefly when talking about Wambasaka. But I want to talk about the potential formations that we could see as the season progresses and also what we've already seen. I mean, as we've seen already and as we've seen in his past, he likes to play with that four at the back within a three three midfield and attack ahead of him but it's not really rigid it's very much so fluid and that coincides with a lot of the players that West Ham have you've got Thomas Suchek who's brilliant at crashing the box late you've got Lucas Paqueta who's going to be wanting to get into advanced areas then we've also got Guido Rodriguez who sits obviously a little bit deeper and he creates that anchor for the rest of them kind of five forwards really who can all cause a threat on the box to just rotate fluidly Mohamed Kudus we know just performs anywhere and he can take the ball from deep areas if you want him to. So I won't be surprised if we at some point see him centrally. And then you've also got players like Crescenzio Somerville who will get on into it in a little bit. Bowen, Fulcrug, Antonio, all these kind of players for me are very much so in the right place when they're in a fluid system. They can all alternate into the positions that they want to be in. They get the autonomy under Lopetegu. But then that back four and the kind of one six just in front of it are very much so rigid in the fact that they prevent anything from coming past and it kind of facilitates those in front of them. So I've mentioned Crescenzio Somerville already a little bit, but what does he actually bring to this left wing and is he actually good enough 
to mean that we see Kudus maybe playing a little bit more centrally or will Somerville just kind of be an impact option for the whole season? Well, last season he was absolutely phenomenal, truly exceptional. The former Leeds winger scored 20 goals and recorded 9 assists in 46 league matches, seeing him glide to the Championship Player of the Season award. In the English second tier, Somerville averaged 2.54 successful take-ons per 90, setting the top 7% of wingers in Europe's other 14 leagues for progressive carries per game and averaged just over 6 shot creating actions per 90. But how does that translate into this West Ham team? Well, I think having two wide forwards that can come inside and strike on goal is definitely something that is a core part of this West Ham setup. Obviously, you've got Jarrah Bourne on one side. We've seen Mohamed Kudus play in there in the first two games, and both of them kind of do that role absolutely perfectly. But not to forget Somerville, because I also think he could do that left-wing role to a really high standard as well, if he manages to weasel his way into getting a chance at it. Somerville's high volume of shot creating actions and ability to take his man on 1v1 means he fits that profile of winger, that one that looks to shift past his marker and cause a threat from all over the 18 yard box. That's what Somerville's brilliant at and I think that he will carry that into this West Ham team. However, as we've already seen and as I've already mentioned with Kudus obviously starting, it's not definite that Somerville will get himself into the starting 11. I suppose it kind of depends for me how the midfield of West Ham lines up in the future. If it continues with this three-man midfield, Somerville's probably going to struggle to get a bit more minutes and he's going to see a lot of his minutes coming from substitution cameos. However, if we see maybe a 4-2-3-1 approach later on in the season with potentially someone like Edson Alvarez and Guda Rodriguez as the two number sixes, then maybe, just maybe, Somerville could get himself a little shot on that left wing. However, as long as Paqueta's kicking around, I kind of see it hard for Somerville to get into the starting lineup in the Premier League consistently. But this sort of selection, not really dilemma, but kind of debate that you can have thinking about who plays where in this brilliant West Ham attack is not a bad headache. It's really not a bad problem to have if you're a West Ham fan, if you're a West Ham manager, because there's just so much talent. You could start Somerville and you'll still have one of the most promising wingers in the league and you'll still be very happy I think with the output he gives you but when you've got players like Mohamed Kudus who can play there you could throw Paqueta in the 10 and still keep Kudus on the left then you'd be pretty silly to kind of change that when they're just so good at what they do. Moving forward and into a spot that maybe has a little bit less cover than other positions the centre forward position. Over the years West Ham have had a series of centre forward signings and they've kind of all maybe bar a few, have struggled to really get going and properly fire goals in for West Ham. So in their latest bid to get a proper centre forward sign in, they've gone out for Borussia Dortmund's Nicholas Fulkrug to kind of offer battle with Mikel Antonio. In 29 matches last season, Fulkrug racked up 20 goal contributions. However, the biggest thing that I think he brings to the West Ham team is his hold up play, which will facilitate all the brilliant creative players around him, like Bowen, like Kudus, like Paqueta, and obviously like players as a Crescenzio Somerville. Last season, Fulkrug won 3.49 aerial duels per 90, created 1.35 chances per 90, and won just over 5 duels per 90 as well. Coming in at 6 foot 2 and just being an overall handful for defenders means that he may well be the perfect striker for facilitating the other West Ham attackers around him. He's a big lad, he causes chaos, he gets himself a bow. He reminds me of Mikel Antonio a little bit, just from Germany, I suppose. And I think that he is absolutely perfect to come into this West Ham team to obviously battle out with Mikel Antonio for that striker spot and help the players around him to get plenty of goals, which to be fair, they could probably do without a striker. Overall though, I honestly think that the quality that West Ham have in the starting 11 and the quality that they have in their depth puts them in a really, really good position to kind of battle it out for Europe. I'm feeling the European anthem right now. <laughs> It's, it's coming for West Ham. They've also had a fairly decent start to the Premier League season. They've got one win, one loss, going up against Aston Villa in that loss. It's not really a surprise that they got beat, if we're being honest. I mean, Aston Villa have had an even better summer window than West Ham. Were absolutely amazing last season and have built upon that. And I think majority of teams will fall to a defeat against Aston Villa. And then you've also got Crystal Palace who, to be fair, have again grown to be a team that could potentially be feared by quite a few in this league in the coming season, and they beat them. So, I think West Ham are building something really nice. They're beating teams that they should be beating, like Crystal Palace, put up a good fight against a team that are going to be up there again this season in that European battle in Aston Villa. I think West Ham have set themselves out for what could be 
a special, special season in London. So if you have enjoyed today's video, lads, please do leave a like and subscribe. I hope you have enjoyed. Audience. <laughs>